Welcome back to my channel. This is view 3 zg Today we are going to upgrade UEK6 with version 2.5 HF module accommodating dual antenna. I ordered this module kit from Banggood and it comes in a nice little box along with an IPX pigtail, wire for connections, an SMA female bulkhead connector, an inductor and a few SMT capacitors that we likely won't use. Let's get started. I previously made a video on installing the version 1 module and today we will be using the same radio for a hardware upgrade. Here's the version 1 module safely nested in place. Let's zoom in. Comparing the two modules, the version 2.5 features an IPX antenna port, a low noise amplifier for HF, an audio amplifier and upgraded filters along with some new capacitors and inductors. As we install the version 2.5 module, it fits perfectly into the existing form factor. For the modifications, we need to remove the flash LED and two SMD components marked in the positions. Since the SMD components are out in the previous update, I do not have to repeat the same step again. I'll just need to take out the LED. In the previous version, I replace the inductor near the SMA connector, so I'll also swap it back with the original SMD inductor that I have kept safe. The first step in this upgrade is to carefully remove the old module without making a mess. For this task, I'll stick with my trusty old tools, a sieving needle and a regular soldering iron along with plenty of flux of course. I started by disconnecting the wires for RST and audio, then desolder the IC dip following the exact reverse sequence of the installation process. After removing the old module, I cleaned up any excess solder from the Atadia. Next, I placed the version 2.5 module in position, aligning it carefully. You can also use double sided tape for this purpose. I began soldering the deep part. Followed by ground connection. The RST contact connects to the SMD resistor and finally I attach the audio output of the module to the SMD capacitor. This part is now complete. Let's check for any solder imperfections using a digital multimeter set to continuity test. Everything looks good. Now let's disconnect the speaker connections for adding flexibility. We'll remove the flash LED and swap out the inductors located below the LCD. To do this, we need to lift the LCD display carefully without damaging the flexible contacts. Since the screws are tight and my position screwdrivers are a bit worn, I'll desolder the LED without removing the PCB from the frame. I cut the LED leads extending from the bottom of the PCB, then heat up the contacts with a soldering iron and pull out the LED. Now I'll proceed to replace the inductor with the old SMD inductor. It's time for some hands-on work, starting with IPEX SMA pigtail preparation. We will need to make some mechanical modifications to the provided SMA bulkhead. Begin by removing all four legs using nose player. It's not too difficult. Once the legs are off, use a chisel file to make the cuts uniform. 
We will be fixing the SMA bulkhead in the flashlight LED hole. But since the dimensions are smaller than the required, we will need to enlarge the hole. Use an appropriate tools you have on hand to accomplish this. After some effort, the semiconductor should fit nicely into the hole and can be secured with provided washer and nut. A challenge here is that due to tight space near the LCD panel, the square base of the bulkhead semiconductor also needs to fit inside the plastic wall. Otherwise, it could interfere with the LCD's flexible connection. To create the necessary space for the SMA base, I used a soldering iron with a damaged tip, which may require some effort to shape properly. Once that is done, let's prepare the SMA IPX pigtail. The provided pigtail has one end with the coax already cut and ready for soldering. I trimmed the center pin of the SMA connector completely and soldered the coax center directly to it, connecting the coax shield to SMA body. Before soldering, I took a moment to check the pigtail using digital multimeter set to continuity test, ensuring everything was in good condition. Next, it's straightforward. Secure the SMA bulkhead in the flashlight LED hole. I place some hot glue around the soldered area, clean up any mess and reconnect the speaker cables. Root the coax pigtail from below the LCD display, then attach it to the IPEX male connector on the module. Carefully reassemble the frame into the radio case and insert the battery. Now, let's see if the radio power is on. Long press the zero or FM button. If it launches the HS dashboard followed by a wait message, we can assume that the upgrade was successful. I tested the UHF part and I was able to trigger the local UHF repeater which indicates that everything is functioning correctly after this modification. Now let's test the HF part which is our point of interest. And my first test is to receive the HF morning net on 40 meters using a VHF dipole. Yes, you heard that right, a VHF dipole. I was able to receive the HF morning net very clearly. Next, I tested with a 90 cm telescopic antenna and I still managed to pick up the 40 meter edge of net using the antenna when positioned horizontally. Here are the results on other bands using the same VHF dipole, which showcases the remarkable sensitivity of SI-472 across multiple bands.